have a feeling that everybody can create. All my life I was drawing in art classes. I didn't decide to be a professional artist until about in the late 50s. And it was a very big decision. I knew that uh, it would have to take every minute of my life other than what I needed to devote to you and Dad. My husband always encouraged me to keep creating. Sunlight as it hit the water and danced off. movement of the seagulls and the ocean. I saw a wonderful orange moon. The circle will appear in my work over and over again. I was painting murals for a shopping center in St. Joseph, Missouri, when the architect asked me to create sculpture around a post in the mall. First I said, no, I'm not a sculptor. I was very excited about my painting and I knew that I was growing as a painter. And I was really afraid to take time away from that. And then I realized that I was really just dying to get involved in sculpture. I started experimenting with every material conceivable that I could manipulate with my own hands. Seeing my forms move in space was so exciting that I could not go back to painting on a flat surface. So I decided to combine painting and sculpture into one art form. While I worked on my canvases in space, I kept thinking of dancers moving in space, relating to each other. I started feeling like I needed to find a new material for my sculpture, a material that really felt like it belonged hanging in space. And that's when I found plexiglass. It was such a beautiful material. The light and shadow really inspired me, but plexiglass was full of new problems. It scratched as I worked with it. I got burned as I worked with it. It cut me. but. It was an exciting material that seemed to be the answer for what I was searching for. For the first time, I found myself making art not related to real objects, just making shapes that felt right.
my first aqua blitz sculpture. The sheet of plexiglass was sawed to make these slits, and then the flat sheet was put in the 14 foot oven. When the plexiglass came out of the oven, it was hot and limp, and Irwin was assigned to one corner, Connie to another, the man who owned the oven was in another corner, and I had another corner, telling everybody to push here and pull there. Within seconds, the plexiglass cooled, and my sculpture was created. sculpture, 43 feet high, is composed of 9,000 feet of beaded chain and 250 plexiglass discs that were cooked in my oven at home. Poor Irwin and Connie came home to the smell of plexiglass instead of chocolate cakes. I was listening to Buddy Rich and his band, and all of a sudden I saw dots dancing on top of plexiglass. I was on the beach and I saw something come in on a wave and I thought I'd be the first human being to touch this piece of nature. And when I saw that it was a torso of a doll, I laughed and said, someday it will be part of a sculpture. A year later, I started creating found object sculptures. Really, really exciting to have you and Dad always with me. Uh, every exhibit always uh, shared the work of, of hanging it. You were always there with me. I loved pushing the plexiglass, but then allowing it a chance to find its own most graceful position before I stopped it. I'm real excited about having my art in shopping centers. I think, strangely enough, that I forget that my work is out there. And that there's so many people every day in contact with my work. When I do remember that, it's a thrilling thought.
and I went into the grade schools and spoke to all the eighth graders about my sculpture and asked them to engrave their names on the stars. Once I had become a sculptor, it was rare for me to paint. But every once in a while, I did. And most often, my circle was present. I remember through the years of working on sculpture, and I would be struggling with the physical efforts of, of uh, working with materials and involvement and, and uh, pain sometimes and, and I'd stop and remember the sheer joy of painting and you know I'd say you know what kind of nut am I to give up the joy of painting but I never doubted that I was doing the right thing it was just funny to to realize the contrast between spontaneously and joyously putting paint down on canvas and struggling with the physical demands of being a sculptor In 1952, I wanted some drawings to go over our bed, and I put my doodles on good drawing paper. It was a, an arabesque dancing line, and I didn't have the maturity, the sophistication to just leave that line alone and let it just be a beautiful line. I probably I suppose was embarrassed to just put a beautiful line up on the wall. So in order to justify the existence of that, that line, I added a face and, and hands and shoes and even sequins to match the bedspread in the room. 23 years later, I made this sculpture from a spontaneous drawing. It was then I realized my doodles were the essence of me. So I started buying stacks of drawing pads and pouring out drawings page after page after page. As these lines danced from my hands, I believed that they were related to the trees that I drew as a child. I always drew trees, and I always felt each branch as it grew up from the roots. This was the first of my spontaneous drawings that I turned into sculpture. From this time, everything that I would create would come from the spontaneous drawing.
This is Nessie, about which I also have written a children's book. I call this dancing. But all of a sudden, I took up two Conte crayons and started drawing with both hands at once. to figure out why on earth I was drawing with both hands at once. I remembered how my work has been influenced by dance, and I realized that perhaps I'm dancing on paper. And how can you dance with one half of your body? I needed my entire body to dance, to feel whole. From 1977 on, all my drawings have been made with two hands at once. how it was possible that I could have been working in black and white all those years. I decided to force myself to use color again just to see what it felt like. Once I got started again, I couldn't stop using color. This time, the two hands went out and up and back again at the top, making just a simple oval. This oval felt so right. I wondered why my hands had been dancing around all this time, when this is what I had been trying to say all these years. I felt satisfied. I felt good. 
So often I find people wanting to create artwork, but afraid. I have so much fun just letting drawings flow from me that I wish I could encourage other people to just let lines flow on paper, to just let their hands dance on paper. <laughs>